اهلا وسهلا بالجميع محاضره اليوم بعنوان ناتشورال سامبلينج This is an outline of today's lecture. In this lecture, we will continue with the subject which we started out in the previous lecture, which is about sampling. Uh, sampling is the process by which a continuous time, continuous amplitude signal is converted into a discrete time, continuous amplitude signal. There are three types of sampling ideal sampling, natural sampling, and flat-topped sampling. Ideal sampling, the sampling theorem, and the phenomenon of aliasing were presented in the previous lecture. This lecture focuses on natural sampling and the sampling theorem. In the next lecture, we consider flat-topped sampling, which is the sample and hold and the subject of time division multiplexing. Let us first consider the time and the frequency domain characteristics of the periodic train of rectangular pulses. Find the trigonometric Fourier series of the periodic rectangular signal defined over one period T0 as G of T equal plus A for T between minus tau over 2 and tau over 2 and 0 otherwise. Uh, this is the periodic train of rectangular pulses. It assumes two values, either plus A or 0. The signal takes on the value plus A between minus tau over 2 and tau over 2 over one cycle of the function, this is how the signal G of T looks like. We need to find the Fourier series expansion of this periodic function G of T. Uh, the Fourier series is given as A0 plus summation between 1 to infinity of A sub n cosine n omega 0 T plus B sub N sine N omega zero T. A zero is the DC or average value and can be evaluated as follows. A zero equal one over T zero, the integration between minus tau over two to tau over two of G of T DT. So we divide by the period and integrate between minus tau over 2 to tau over 2. This is the period over which the function g of t is non-zero. Substitute the value of g of t, which is plus a, and so uh, after carrying out the integration, a0 equal a tau over t0. The ratio tau over t0, this is called the duty cycle of the pulse train. The ratio of tau over T0, this is called the duty cycle. Now we come to the coefficient B sub N. B sub N equal 2 over T0, the integration between minus tau over 2 to tau over 2 of G of T sine 2 pi N over T0 T dt. G of T is an even function of T sine 2 pi n over T0 T is an odd function of T and so we're multiplying an even function by an odd function and integrating over a symmetrical interval between minus tau over 2 and tau over 2 so this integration is zero. Therefore, B sub N equal to zero. Now we evaluate the coefficient A sub N. A sub N equal two over T zero, integration between minus tau over two to tau over two of G of T cosine two pi N over T zero T DT. Uh, G of T is an even function cosine 
2 pi n over t0 t is an even function so we're multiplying an even function with an even function so the product is also an even function in t therefore we uh, integrate between 0 to tau over 2 and multiply the result by 2 so the coefficient a sub n becomes 4 over t0 integration between 0 to tau over 2 a cosine 2 pi n over t0 t dt and after substituting the limits of integration we obtain this expression for the coefficient a sub n it equals 2 a over n pi sine n pi tau over t0 turns out that this coefficient a sub n will be zero for specific values of the integer n a sub n equal to zero whenever the argument of the sine function is an integer multiple of pi and this occurs when n equal t0 over tau t0 over tau or n equal 2 t0 over tau or n equal 3 t0 over tau and so on on the next slide we will take an example that demonstrates the situation where a sub n becomes zero uh, let's assume that we have a rectangular with frequency f equal 10 which means that the period t0 is 0.1 we also assume that the duty cycle is 0.2 so the ratio of this on time by the entire period is 0.2 so 20 percent of the time uh, the pulse uh, assumes the value 1 and 80 percent of the time the pulse assumes the value 0 this is what duty cycle means the Fourier series expansion of this periodic train of pulses is a0 which is the DC term a tau over t0 and tau over t0 equal 0 0.2 so a0 equal 0 0.2 times a um, plus summation between 1 to infinity a sub n cosine 2 pi n f0 t and a sub n this is the expression for a sub n which we found on the previous slide a sub n equal to a over n pi sine n pi tau over t0 so this is um, this is the Fourier expansion of uh, this pulse train now we can take the Fourier transform of this sequence and the Fourier transform of a0 is a0 delta of f which is an impulse at f equal to zero so this is uh, the dc term plus a sub a, the Fourier transform of a sub n cosine 2 pi n f0 t and we know that the Fourier transform of cosine consists of two impulses at f equal n f0 and f equal minus n f0 and n runs between 1 to infinity so f0 equal to 10 so we have now uh, the impulses at f0 which is 10 minus f0 which is minus 10 20 minus 20 30 minus 30 40 and minus 40 what about 50 and minus 50 uh, we observe that these terms vanish by virtue of this property here 
that t0 over tau equal 5 and also we have also at 100 and minus 100 also these spectral lines vanish um, again at because uh, this ratio is 2 t0 over tau equal to 10. So we observe that uh, there are uh, certain frequencies at which the spectral lines have zero value. These are some of the properties of this rectangular function. This rectangular function will be found useful when we consider natural sampling on the next slide. Natural sampling. Natural sampling. Uh, in natural sampling, the message m of t with Fourier transform m of f, which is band limited to w hertz, is multiplied by a periodic sequence of pulses with period ts to produce the sample signal ms of t. So this is how natural sampling is performed. The periodic train of pulses g of t is multiplied by the band limited signal m of t with bandwidth w and the product of the sampling process is denoted by ms of t. g of t assumes two values either plus one for a duration of tau or zero for the rest of the period. So during this time interval g of t takes on the value plus 1. When we multiply it by m of t, we obtain m of t. m s of t equal m of t during this time interval. During this time interval, g of t takes on the value 0. And so we are multiplying 0 with m of t and the result is zero. Then during this time interval g of t is one and again we're multiplying this one by a new value of the function m of t and so m s of t follows m of t over this time interval. And then over this time interval, g of t is zero, and so ms of t is also zero. Therefore, the product ms of t follows m of t during the time in which g of t is one and zero whenever the pulse g of t is zero. ms of t follows the trajectory of m of t whenever g of t is 1 and 0 whenever g of t is 0. Uh, we can write this mathematically as m s of t, the sample signal, this sample signal, this is the sample signal, It equals m of t whenever g of t is plus 1 and equal to 0 whenever g of t equal to 0. Now the objective is to find the Fourier transform of this sample signal m s of t in terms of the Fourier transform of the baseband signal m of t. So this is, this is the fundamental relationship that we're using here, that m s of t equal m of t times g of t. As we have seen on the previous slide, m s of t equal m of t times g of t. Now we expand g of t in terms of its Fourier series. We have m of t and we replace g of t by a0 plus summation from 1 to infinity of a sub n cosine 2 pi n fst. Of course, fs is the sampling frequency 
or the frequency of the sequence of rectangular pulses. So we have m of t times this whole term. Now we can uh, expand this product as a0 times m of t plus m of t times a sub n cosine 2 pi n fst. We take the Fourier transform of ms of t, which is ms of f equal a0 m of f plus the Fourier transform of a product of a function m of t times cosine. This we have seen uh, multiple times in this course equals to a sub n over 2 m of f minus n f s plus m m of f plus n f s. That is uh, the spectrum of m of t is shifted to the right and to the left by n f s. We assume first that f s is larger than 2 w and see what happens. Now we need to plot m s of f. m s of f consists of infinite number of terms. The first term a0 m of f is located at the origin. So this is a0 m of f. Now we have a sub 1 over 2 m of f minus f s. That is we started with n equal 1. So m of f minus f s is this term centered at f s and its height is a sub 1 over 2. a sub 1 of course is the Fourier coefficient a sub 1 in the Fourier series expansion. We also have a sub 1 over 2 m of f plus f s, which, which is this term m of f plus f s. Then for n equal to 2, we have m of f minus 2 f s plus m of f plus 2 f s. This is a 2 over 2 m of f minus 2 f s and this is a sub 2 over 2 m of f plus 2 f s. This should be a plus. We recall that a sub n, a sub n, the magnitude of a sub n decreases as n increases. This is a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and so on. As n increases, the magnitude of a sub n decreases. This observation justifies what we see in this figure, that the height of this term, which is a sub 1 over 2, is greater than the height of this term, which is a 2 over 2. Uh, this Fourier coefficient is smaller than this Fourier coefficient. Now, if fs minus w is greater than w, then these two frequency uh, components are separated and they do not overlap in frequency. This, of course, is equivalent to saying that fs is greater than 2w. If fs the sampling frequency is greater than twice the message bandwidth, these two frequency components are detached and therefore if we pass ms of t, this ms of t, through a low pass filter with bandwidth equal to w, then we can extract this term which is proportional to m of t and reject all other terms which are outside the pass band of the filter. So in this case, the output of the low pass filter 
will be proportional to the message m of t. That is y of f equal this constant of proportionality a0 times m of f or equivalently y of t equal a0 times m of t. Therefore, if the sampling frequency is greater than twice the message bandwidth, then the message can be recovered without any distortion. In this lecture, we're verifying a result which we have also encountered in the previous lecture uh, with regard to ideal sampling in which the message signal was uh, recovered without distortion provided that the sampling frequency is greater than twice the message bandwidth. We repeat the same result, uh, a band-limited signal with no frequency components above W hertz can be recovered uniquely from its samples taken every T S seconds provided that Fs is greater than or equal to 2W where Fs equal 1 over Ts is the sampling rate in samples per second. The message M of T can be recovered from MS of T using an ideal low-pass filter with bandwidth W. So this is MS of T, this is the low-pass filter, and this is the output Y of T. The sampling frequency Fs equal 2 W is called the Nyquist rate. It represents the minimum rate at which a signal must be sampled in order to reconstruct it from its samples without distortion. When the sampling rate is less than the Nyquist rate, a distortion type of noise called aliasing results. The sampling theorem says this. If we are given this sampled signal and we're sampling at a rate greater than the Nyquist rate, then if we pass this sampled signal through an ideal low-pass filter, the output of the low-pass filter will be the function m of t itself. That is, we do not lose any information uh, due to the process of sampling. However, if we sample at a rate smaller than the Nyquist rate, then aliasing will result. Now we consider the case when the sampling frequency is smaller than twice the message bandwidth. Let M of T be the baseband signal with bandwidth W hertz. Assume that Fs is smaller than 2W. We need to find ms of f and the filtered signal. Now we recall that the Fourier transform of the uh, sampled signal is ms of f equal a0 m of f plus summation from 1 to infinity of a sub n over 2 m of f minus n f s plus m of f plus n f s. Uh, this first term here, A0, M of F, this term is located at the origin, and then for N equal 1, we have A sub 1 over 2, M of F minus Fs plus M of F plus Fs. So, uh, this is the shifted spectrum, its center is around Fs, and it's weighted by a sub 1 over 2, and also we have M of F plus Fs centered around minus Fs, and its height is A sub 1 over 2. As we observe, Fs minus W is smaller than, than W. The theorem says that uh, the Fourier transform of the sample signal Ms is the sum. So we have to sum the first term with all other spectral terms. This means that 
the Fourier transform ms of f is the sum of a0, m of f, and a1 over 2, m of f minus fs, a1 over 2, m of f plus 2 fs, and so on. So we sum. But we have, for now, we have to worry about the components which are within the message bandwidth between minus w and w. So we, we sum this term and this term and this term. Of course, the shape of ms of f depends on the exact shape of m of f and the sampling frequency fs. Let us assume that when we add these three components, we will end up with a shape like this one. Now this shape, of course, is not a constant times the message m of f. This means that we have uh, aliasing, that we have a distortion due to aliasing. ms of t is passed through an ideal low pass filter with bandwidth w, then the output of the low pass filter will no longer be proportional to the message m of t. That is, within this bandwidth, a part of this spectral component will be introduced into this frequency band and it becomes part of it. So it becomes inseparable from the frequency components between zero and W. So we have, we have a distortion. In general, we uh, use a relationship of this form in order to describe the Fourier transform of the uh, output of the low pass filter. That is, we say we take the low pass, the low pass of this of these three terms, which are a zero m of f plus a one over two m of f minus f s. That is the sum of these three components plus a one over two m of f plus fs. So this y of f here, the low pass, this is what we assume to be uh, the output of the low pass filter, which of course is not proportional to a0 m of f. Now we have an example where fs is greater than 2w. Uh, our message signal is a sinusoidal signal with frequency one hertz, this is m of t, it's a cosine function. This is the trajectory of the message m of t, and we sample it naturally using periodic pulses with frequency 10 hertz and the duty cycle of 0.5. Uh, when we multiply the square function with the message signal we obtain the sample signal which is like this it takes on the values m of t when the periodic square function equal one and equal to zero when this when the square function is zero so this is now our sample signal in the frequency domain, we see that the Fourier transform of the sample signal will be shifted versions of the spectrum of the message M of T weighted by the appropriate uh, Fourier coefficient. So in the frequency domain, the Fourier transform of the sample signal, as we have seen before, equal A0 m of f plus summation between 1 to infinity of a sub n over 2 m of f minus n f s plus m of f plus n f s. Uh, the spectrum of the message itself, of course, consists of two spectral lines at 1 and minus 1. This component, a0 m of f, 
is proportional to the message. So we have this spectral line at one and this spectral line at minus one, of course, multiplied by A zero. And then we have A one over two, M of F minus Fs. This, these two lines here, one at um, 11 and one at nine, because the sampling frequency is 10, so we have M of F minus Fs. Fs is 10, so this spectral line at 11, this spectral line at 9, multiplied by A1 over 2. We also observe that uh, since the duty cycle is 0.5, then the spectral lines at twice the uh, sampling frequency is zero. So we don't have any uh, spectral lines around twice the sampling frequency. At 3F0, when n equal to 3, we have m of f minus 3F0. So this is 30, this is 31, this is 29, and so on. Uh, now we observe that our sampling frequency is 10. The message bandwidth is 1 hertz, so the sampling frequency is much higher than the Nyquist rate. The Nyquist rate, of course, is just 2, which is twice the message bandwidth. We're sampling at a rate of 10 samples per second. As we can see, this term at the origin is far apart from the term at 10 meaning that if we pass this sampled signal into a low pass filter, this low pass filter, then the output Y of T will be proportional to the message M of T, which is cosine two pi T. So we can, in this case, recover the message M of T without any distortion. In fact, the output of the low pass filter will be a constant times the function itself, m of t, meaning that we can recover the original message m of t from the sampled signal ms of t. So this is this is the idea of this lecture. هاي نهاية المحاضرة إلى اللقاء.